what is going on guys welcome back to ranger central and today we are going to talk about the 2024 trade deadline from the new york rangers and recap it give my thoughts and opinions thank you to everyone that joined in on my live streams over the past few days whether you were joining for the jake gensel watch streams which obviously aged poorly uh or if you were watching the trade deadline stream i did today either way i do appreciate it uh so yeah thank you guys so much for the, all that all the support that we grew all the hate too that we grew too it was really fun uh but before we jump into everything please be sure to leave a like on the video if you do enjoy subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're ranger fans and turn on your notifications so you know when i upload or go live but before we jump into everything i did want to promote some new shirts that i did decide to release cardiac ranger shirts it's a saying that i have here on the channel if you are new where the rangers always Got to make things interesting, make things close in their game. So we say Cardiac Rangers here. I decided to release some shirts. So if you want a shirt, link is in the description for that. I appreciate everyone that did buy shirts throughout the live stream since I decided to promote it there. But yeah, let and also tweet at me if you do get a shirt. But let's talk about the trade deadline. Enough promotion, enough everything, enough yapping. Talk about it. So first, we'll start off with the Rangers first move where they got Alexander Wenberg. I already did a video on it, so I'm not going to go too in depth on Alexander Wenberg. But I do like the pickup there. I think they overpaid slightly for Alexander Wenberg. It, like I said in the video, that was the price you had to pay. After seeing what more guys went for, I'll say it is a bit of an overpay, but I don't hate the idea of overpaying a bit considering the center market was thin to begin with. And if it's the guy they wanted, it's the guy they wanted and they got him. So I don't hate the idea of it. And I think he's a fine player. If you want my full breakdown, again, check that video out. But 25 points this year and 60 games played. He's going to be a third line center. There's really not much more to it other than what I said in the video. So go check that out. But the second trade we saw was Chad Ruedel, who was traded from the Penguins to the Rangers in exchange for a 2027 fourth round pick. And that's pretty much what the market was for defensemen all day. At first, I thought it was a bit of an overpay. But then we saw more defensemen go for a fourth round pick. So I don't hate the move entirely in terms of that. He's not going to blow you away with his offense. And funny enough, I was actually saying all day yesterday that maybe the Rangers should get Ruedel in a trade package with Jake Gensel and they end up getting him. He's not going to log a lot of minutes. He's going to be a bottom pair defenseman. And he actually does have really good analytics in terms of how he is defensively. Good on the penalty kill. Good at even strength. And the only issue is when this team is healthy, because as of right now, Truba's hurt. So you have to assume he just slots in the lineup for Truba. Don't know if he's going to play on the second pair or the third pair. But with Chad Ruedel, I think he's going to be a very solid fit in terms of just logging you some minutes. The only thing is giving up a fourth for a guy that might be a rotational piece. Don't love it. In the grand scheme of things, I get it. A fourth isn't a lot. But considering what fourths were moved for at this deadline, I feel that it is a little bit um, of an overpay. But again, this is the guy they wanted. This is the guy they got. Deadline day is about overpaying regardless, so I don't hate the move entirely. I just think personally that you should they should play him more. Like If anything, I'm arguing that they should just play him more. It's just that simple. I think he's a better player than Gustafson. The problem is that he's right shot, Gustafson's left shot. So unless Ruido's okay with playing the left side, it is going to throw a wrench into things. But Justin Braun was right shot and did play the left shot with Braden Schneider. So maybe that's what they envision, or maybe based on matchup decisions they envision it that way we will see what they do in terms of that but yeah i like the chad ruedel move and then the next move that they did make was a little bit of a ahl swap where they got nick patan from the iowa wild or minnesota wild whatever you want to say in exchange for turner elson i do like this move uh too because you might as well just improve hartford why not and nick patan actually is a guy that might be closer to being able to log nhl games i mean he has 108 games played only 23 points in those so it's not anything crazy but it is just nhl veteran presence slash ahl veteran presence that could help out the team and turner ellison was a guy that was just buried in the ahl playing in the bottom six so i did like turner ellison with the way that he played in hartford i thought he brought some nice physicality there but hartford kind of already has enough of that so nick patan coming in and being a guy that could add some offense to that lineup in hartford does make a difference in terms of their calder uh cup push which i know that for you guys you guys aren't going to care but for the organization it does mean a little bit of something and again he is a guy that could log nhl minutes if there is some injury so i don't hate the idea there but then you have jack rosovic which was arguably 
the biggest move of the deadline because and it's very underwhelming i'll be honest but it's arguably the biggest move and they get him for a fourth round pick i don't know when that fourth round pick is i don't think we heard exactly what year it is i'd imagine that it is this year maybe or because it can't be next year so it's either this year or 2026 probably but uh especially because they gave up their other one for ruedel in 2027 but I think that Jack Rosovic is a good player to add. And this is the type of guy I felt that the Rangers needed. A guy that adds speed into the lineup. A guy that does bring a little bit of physicality. I did like the way they played when they did play against Columbus recently. And I said it in my videos or post-game shows then that Jack Rosovic, it looked like he was trying out a bit for the Rangers there with the way that he was playing. And sure enough, now he's here. He's a, he's a little over half a point a game. Uh pace right now for the Columbus Blue Jackets in 40 games he has 23 points six goals 17 assists on the year a minus nine doesn't take a lot of penalties which is nice hopefully that doesn't change he's getting a lot of ice time in Columbus he's probably going to here because I'd imagine he's going to play the top line or he might start out on the third line since the Rangers might want to keep that line together with Kako, Zabanja, and Kreider and if not they could just flip those two around which that's what it seems like they want to do at 5v5 since that's really the biggest question is how is he at 5v5 considering the fact that this team has really not got a lot of five, uh, 5v5 production all year. He has 16 of his points at 5v5 in 40 games, so three goals, 13 assists. He's a little bit more of a passenger, which does scare me if he does play with Kreider and Zibanejad because even if he does play on the third line, actually, with Cooley and Wenberg, just because I feel that this team really needed a guy that's more of a play driver, which is why I was really upset when they didn't get Gensel, which is why I'm upset that they didn't get just any other options really for the right wing position. I do feel he's a bit of a passenger, but I do again like his team speed a lot, and I think that's going to add a big impact for this team that they've been desperately uh, needing. So I do like the Rosovic pickup. I was really hoping that they would sneak in maybe a Riley Smith deal before the bell rang at the deadline here but that unfortunately did not happen at all and it is what it is um in terms of other things that did happen during the deadline here for the rangers rempy and edstrom got sent down as paper moves but i'd imagine one of them is going to come back up to be the 13th forward i'd probably say it's going to be edstrom and then rempy who was just kind of more of a placeholder today on the fourth line during practice i'd imagine he's going to be the one sent down could be wrong but that's just what I'd imagine right now. So, yeah, you get uh, Edstrom now as the 13th forward. I'd prefer him to play over Barkley Goudreau with VC and Brodzinski on the fourth line. Probably not going to happen. But that's what they did. That, that's what they did. And I will say this. Well, before I do, the lineup. Let's talk about the lineup. So the lineup probably now, again, the first line is going to be Kreider, Zibanejad, Rosovic, if I had to take a guess. Again, maybe Kako stays there. Panarin, Trocek, Lafreniere. Third line, Cooley, Wenberg. And that's either going to be Rosovic or Kako there on that third line. And then the fourth line is going to be Brodzitski, Goudreau, and VC. So VC will slot down on the fourth line now. Here are my overall thoughts now with all that said. I think that the Rangers did a fine job at adding assets. They didn't pay a premium really for any of these guys. Not I should say really, they didn't pay a premium at all for any of these guys. So I think they did a good job there with bolstering depth. But I really, really feel still that the Rangers should have went all in to get a legitimate bona fide top line right winger, whether it was get paying the price to get Gensel, whether it was paying the price to go out and get a Frank Vitrano or Pavel Buchnevich, Alex Tuck. I still feel that they should have went out and got one of those type of players Considering the fact that they went all in, sort of, I I guess all in, you could say with, a, say loosely a bit, back in 2022, your first year out of the rebuild, where you're second in the division, I get it, you go all in there to get like Andrew Kopp, uh, Vetrano they didn't overpay for, obviously, Braun slightly overpaid for, but not anything bad, and then they of course got Mott, but they did overpay for Kopp looking back in retrospect on that deal, but again, like I... Feel that they should have been more willing to give their first round pick I'm starting the question now if that rumor was true after all that Dolan wanted them to hold the first round pick they had for the sphere which obviously would have made things tougher for Drury to make a move for a top line right winger which is very disappointing if they're if that report is true but 
Again, I still feel they really need to go all in. You're in first place in your division right now. You see your rival get Jake Gensel as well. You see the Florida Panthers add Tarasenko. And I know teams in the East, like the only other teams that really made a move in the East are like the Tampa Bay Lightning who got Dumba and Duclair. And then Philly, they tinkered with their roster a bit. Nothing crazy. New Jersey added Allen. Boston, I think, got better as well. Still think they're lacking center depth to go far in the playoffs themselves. But again, We'll see. I like that the Rangers have a deeper roster, which I said in the start of my live stream that that's what they needed to do. Get deeper, uh, get a deeper roster. But I still felt, all right, get me like a Riley Smith even. I'm not asking for the world at that point too. At the end, I'm like, all right, get Riley Smith. And all of a sudden you're talking like Kreider's a badge at Smith on that top line. Then you have the second line stay intact. You get Cooley, Wenberg, Rosovic together on that third line. And then the fourth line, you can mix uh, mix and match there a bit with what you want to do. Although, Kaka would probably play on the third line. And then you'd have to slot a guy like maybe Cooley down on the fourth line. Which, still, I wouldn't hate. Like, that's a very deep team that I think could make a lot of noise. And now it feels more like they're relying on the top guys to step up. Like, this is it. If Mika and Kreider do not improve their 5v5 play, more so Mika Zibanejad, who has been underwhelming at 5v5 this year... This team really, let's be quite frank, this team at that point has to rely on the second line to outscore their opponent every night and Igor Shosturkin to stand on his head. It's just that simple, and that would be the formula at that point. And if that doesn't happen and the second line can't outscore the problems, they're going to run into trouble. So this is pretty much just Meek and Kreider have to step up if this team wants to make noise since they didn't get that legit bonafide top line right winger. Do I agree with the decision that they did? No, I, I still felt, again, this was really the year to be aggressive. A lot of us said it going into the deadline too that, you know, again, you're in first place right now. This was really the year. Panarin's having an MVP year. Igor was starting to bounce back. This was the year, in my opinion, to really, really put your foot on the gas and go all in. They didn't do it, but... Again, we'll, um, I guess we'll see how it works out. That's kind of the mindset that I have is I don't love it. I don't despise it. It's kind of like, let's just see where it goes. And hopefully for I, all we could do is hope for the best. All we could do is the badge ad hope is, uh, hope that's a badge ad Kreider step up and take a step forward, which they've not done most of the year. So badge ad pretty much all year in terms of the five V five play. Hope that they take a step forward, and that's really all that could change the entire outlook of this team. Because if those guys improve at 5v5, hell, even Kako, if he could take a step forward too, that would also, and Kako just in general, even like in terms of producing points, like he's been fine away from the puck, but in terms of starting to rack up points, then I like this team's chances as good as like against a lot of teams. Don't get me wrong, like I like this team's chances against a lot of teams, but. They have to get that. They have to get that. And we've been asking that for months. So is it possible? I don't know. Time will tell. So I'm not feeling one way or the other. But if they are an early exit, I'll be very disappointed with what Jury did this deadline. If they were, if they obviously win the cup, then I don't care. Then I don't care. And I'm very happy at that point. If they're a conference finals or a finals exit, I don't know how I'll feel considering what's the reason like if they if I felt they were a difference maker away from winning then you got to look back at the deadline and just question it as well but again I'm more of a we'll wait and see what happens here at this point I'm definitely feeling better than I was obviously pre-deadline I'm feeling better than I was even though again I wanted a difference maker I wanted Jake Gensel badly you guys know that I was livid when it didn't happen but I'm feeling better since that live stream and now it's just let's hope for the best Hope for the best. I don't love the strategy at all, but all we could do, all we could do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you love the deadline moves that the Rangers made? Do you hate them? Are you in the middle like I am where it's kind of just, let's see how it goes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. A little love to hear. Leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.